Hi, we're back to basics, so I thought I would do a simple stroke design for you. My firm belief is once you master strokes, all your painting becomes easier. For this project, I chose a design from this book I have that has period designs in it, and I updated it with some of the new DecoArt colors. These are just a few of the new colors. I just think they are so luscious. This design was originally done on a crock in New York in about 1867, and I have painted it on a large trinket box from uh, Della Wetterman. This is a tin box. I love painting on tin. I'm not going to go through it for you here in the video, but I just want to tell you how I prep my tin before painting. The first thing I do is wash it really well in soapy water and rinse really well. You can even use some vinegar in your rinse water to get all the soap off. And I dry it really, really well. And then to make sure all the moisture is out, and just to make sure I don't have any moisture hiding in the hinge areas or in any of these um, curled areas, I turn my oven on low, put my tin in, shut the door, and then turn the heat off. You really want to do that. A friend of mine left hers in and forgot to turn the heat off and it melted the soldering. So make sure you turn the heat off. Then when my piece is totally cooled, I um, take it and put it in a well ventilated area like a garage or outside or somewhere. And I give it several coats of a uh, metal primer this is Krylon. You can find this at um, Home Depot, Lowe's, any kind of store like that. And give it several light coats. You don't want to do it too heavy or you're going to have runs. Uh, it only takes about 10 minutes for these to dry, so um, in between coats. So it really doesn't take all that long. And then when um, it's dried totally uh, covered with my metal primer, I take, this is my pattern here, but I take a piece of my tracing paper and I lightly sand my piece just to get any excess, any um, dust or anything that accumulated on there off, and then um, clean it up with a tack cloth. And then I start my base coating. This piece is base coated with Deco Art Antique White. And for my base coating, again, I'm not going to go through all that for you, but I like to use a large three-quarter inch filbert brush or an oval wash, sometimes they're called. Uh, I like to use this because the bristles are rounded and I get nice coverage. And the thing with the rounded bristles is when you use a brush that um, is flat, sometimes those bristles dig into your paint. I find that doesn't happen when I use a nice big filbert brush. So two or three coats on the entire surface, again drying in between coats, and then I trace my pattern on. I want to give you one quick little thing that I like to do. Instead of using graphite, I like to use choco paper. This comes in blue and white. This is a pretty well-loved piece of choco paper. The beauty of this is, I'm just going to use my fingernail on here. So you can see here is my tracing line. Again, on a new sheet, it would certainly show up better than that. But all I need to do is add water, and it totally dissolves. So I don't need to worry about any graphite lines under my pattern, um, next to my pattern, that I'm not able to get out. Okay, let's start painting. I'm going to start with the flower here. I'm going to try to go through this a little quickly because I'm hoping that you understand all these um, things that we're doing, but I will go over it real quick at the beginning here. Um, I'm wetting my brush in my water. And then I'm going to blot it on my paper towel to get that excess water out. When I load my brush, I always load from the side of the puddle and press down to make sure I have all those bristles nicely loaded. And I don't want any blobs of paint because those blobs are going to go right onto your surface once you get your brush down. 
So I am using a number 10 filbert brush here, again, rounded edges. And since my petals all have rounded edges, this just makes really quick work. I just lay my brush down and pull in toward the center. And you can see how quickly I'm getting these petals painted in here. So I just keep going around, pick up a little extra paint when I need to. You can probably do even these large ones, just kind of wiggle your brush a little bit and it pretty much fills in the stroke. On the large one, you might need to do two strokes to finish or complete that stroke. Okay, once that's dry, I start doing my highlighting. Now I'm going to switch to a flat shader brush to do that. And once again, I'm wetting my brush in my water gently blotting it on my paper towel. I'm going to pick up my paint in a corner of the brush. Blend, blend, blend on my palette. I always use wax paper. It's what I was told to do when I first started painting and it's what I continue to do. It's inexpensive and you throw it away and don't feel bad about it. So all of my petals are going to get highlighted on the outside edge. So I'm just going to lay my brush down and add that pink chiffon on the edges of each of my petals. I always start with the darkest highlight color first and then add my lighter color on top of that. So I think you get pretty much get the idea here. This is not my best painting. I apologize, but I want to get through this so you don't have to sit here all day watching me pity pat around on, on my surface. Ideally, I should pick up a little bit more paint. I'm getting dry here, but again, but I'm just kind of going through this to save a little bit of time. Okay. So after my first coat is on, I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did before. So I wet my brush. I'm side loading this time into Sugared Peach, which is one of the new DecoArt colors. I'm blending that on my palette. And I'm going to start adding a little bit more highlight to each of these petals. And you can see that it's just brightening them up a little bit. I forgot to mention on your first highlight color, especially on these bigger petals, you want to walk that color up into the petal. When I'm doing the second color, I'm not going to move it up as far as I did the first time. So there we go. So now we have extra highlight on all of those petals. While the highlight is drying, I'm going to go back to my number 10 filbert brush. Now I'm going to stroke in my center. So again, I've wet my brush. I'm loading it flat from the side of the puddle. And again, the reason I'm using my filbert is because the area I'm working on is round and those rounded um, bristles help me to get a nice rounded edge. So I'm going to start on one side of my center and stroke into the center. And there you go, you're totally covered. Once I have that on and it's dry, and I'm not going to do that now because I'm not going to be drying that. Um, my second color that I used on here uh, no, I take it back. This is just spicy mustard. I do apologize for that. What we're going to do next is to highlight that center, which I actually already did here, but I'm going to go through it again. So I'm picking up <clears throat> this time a little bit of summer squash, deco art summer squash on my brush. 
again blend 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 on my palette and this is going to go at the top of that center <clears throat> excuse me and at the top of that very center part of the center for a little bit of a highlight after that is totally dry of course <clears throat> We need to add some shading to all these petals. I'm starting with DecoArt Baby Pink. Again, paint on the corner of my brush. Blend, blend, blend. And this color is going to go on each petal right next to the center. And on the petal that's underneath where it lays under the one that's on top. So this is coming right here. Now my pattern, this petal is underneath, so I'm not going to shade on this petal. I'm going to shade here. However, if you want this petal to be on top, you certainly can add some shading right along here, and that will help push that petal back and bring this one forward. So again, I'm coming here. So let's let's add that shading there on this big petal. I'm going to go next to the center and bring it on down next to those petals next to it. And then just continue around as before. Again, petal underneath gets the shading and next to the center. On this one, <clears throat> excuse me, I did um, go ahead and I picked up a little bit of Wild Berry in my dirty brush, another one of those new colors by DecoArt. I didn't even bother cleaning out my brush this time. Blend, blend, blend. I'm going to add that color on top of the shading that I already did with the baby pink. So again, on next to the center on the petal toward the back all the way around so here again I'm pushing the center petal back by adding some shading to the sides so these two petals look like they're laying on top of that center petal My last shading color on these petals is magenta, another one of the new DecoArt colors. Again, I wet my brush and blot it, I'm picking up the magenta on the corner of the brush, blending it out. This is my last shadow color, so it's going to be the narrowest. It's going right next to that center, and again, on the petal that's underneath the one that lays on top of it. So I'm going to do that all the way around. You can see on these back petals I'm just adding just a tiny little bit because they're smaller and more narrow or not as long maybe I should say. So again next to the center, next to the petal in front, center, petal in front. These two petals are in front of this center petal. Once again, if you choose, you can certainly make your center petal the one that's on top, and then you would just be adding your shadow to these two petals here, right next to that center petal. We already added the highlight to the center of the flower over here with the summer squash. So now we're gonna start working on the shadow I'm using light cinnamon to do my shadow on the center, but since that's such a dark color next to my base color, what I like to do is I'm going to pick up a corner of that base color, the Spicy Mustard by DecoArt. I'm blending that out. And then on the same corner of the brush, 
I'm going to pick up light cinnamon. I'm going to blend that right on top of where I blended that first color. So I'm mixing those two colors in my brush so it's not as dark as the light cinnamon is. I'm going to come over here to my piece and this color is going to go down here at the bottom. Actually I'm going to pick up a tiny bit more light cinnamon. So I'm coming back here to my same track where I blended before. I'm not seeing enough color change so that's why I added the extra light cinnamon. That's better. I'm going to just float this along the bottom edge of my center and the bottom of that center part of the center. We added the highlight to the top so this is going to get the shadow. When that's dry, I'm just going to use light cinnamon in my brush. So pick up a corner and I'm going to blend it out. And that's going to go on top of what I did with the mix. Again, not quite as wide as that first time. And then what I did, I wanted to add some extra color to these areas, the flower and the center. So while I have that light cinnamon in my brush, again, blend it out, I picked up a little bit of Deco Art Light Avocado in that same corner. Again, I'm coming back to where I blended out my light cinnamon. So this is going to give you a little mm, more brown you want to say that color to um, the paint and I'm adding that just to the bottom edge of my center. You see how that kind of brings that green in a little bit and if you want you can even add some to that center part of the center if that's what you want to do. Also I like to bring all my colors around through my entire design so I actually picked up a little bit of summer squash in my brush blended it out and on my finished piece I added a little bit of yellow to some of my flower petals. You don't have to do it if you don't want. It just kind of makes them a little cheerier and you don't want to do this on all the petals. Just a couple here and there. Again, just to bring some of that color. Let's add a little bit down here too through the entire piece. So that's it on the flowers. We're going to go ahead and start working on the bird. To base coat the bird, what I did, and you can either use your brush or um, a palette knife. Personally, I like using my brush, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm switching to a number eight filbert now because I want to get it right inside of his head. I'm picking up some DecoArt Williamsburg Blue in my brush and coming to another part of my palette. And then I'm also picking up some DecoArt Winter Blue on my brush. Sorry, I put these paints out a bit ago and they're tacking up a little bit. So I apologize for that. I'm just going to mix these colors together here on my palette. I want to lighten up that Williamsburg blue and I don't want it as, as um, bright as the winter blue. So that's why I'm just mixing those two together till I get a color I like. Let's say I think that's a little bit too dark. I can pick up just a little bit of winter blue in my brush and mix it here. If I decide at that point it's too light, I can just pick up some Williamsburg Blue in my brush and mix it in. I, I don't like all that paint in my brush so I am going to wash it out in my tub, water tub and blot that excess moisture out. Again I'm going to load my brush in that paint. Again, I said I like to use this because I'm setting it right down here in the bird's head and pulling around. And basically just stroking this in. I'm going to pull into those legs. Come around into the wing. Fill it in. 
pick up a little bit more paint and my brush. I'm just going to use the chisel edge and stroke in these tail feathers. Don't worry about your pattern, just stroke in whatever you see. Okay, once that's all done, I'm going to keep my brush loaded in my base color. Even though I'm using a filbert brush, I'm just going to pick up some of the winter blue on the side of that brush and I'm blending out. This is my first highlight color on my bird. And I added it along the top of his head and around the front at the top of that wing and on the tops of the tail feathers. So let's start here on the top of the wing. I'm just going to lay my brush down in here with that light color on the outside edge. And I'm going to stroke that in. Same thing here. I'm going to flip my brush over. Start on the top of his head. And pull down. This leg is in the back, so I'm just going to pull my paint right over that back leg onto the front leg. And then to add some highlights to these um, tail feathers, I'm just going to pick up a little bit more paint in my brush, the winter blue, and blend it out. And just use the chisel edge of the brush to just streak some light color in here. So you can see where the tail feathers are. Let me add a little bit more here to the top of the, uh, the wing. Once that's dry, I come back in with just, I, I, I'm sorry, I take it back. What I come back in with is the um, new Deco Art Sugared Peach. So again, a corner load of the brush. I'm going to come back here where I blend it out before, because that might still be a little bit wet. I don't want to lose that moisture from my paint and my brush. I'm going to come back to my bird here and add a little extra highlight to these areas. So on the top of the wing, top of the head, and around this side. Once again, this leg is in front, so my paint goes on there, and I'm going to go right over where that back leg is. And again, stroke, chisel edge of the brush. Let's get a little more paint. So chisel edge of the brush to add a few more highlights to that those tails. To do my shading, I'm cleaning my brush I'm loading and side loading into the Williamsburg Blue. Once more, blend, blend, blend. This color is going to go inside his neck, under the wing, on that back leg, and on the tail feathers where they sit underneath the body. Then once again to kind of pull all these colors together, I left the Williamsburg blue in my brush. I'm coming over to my magenta. I'm going to blend that, those two colors together in my brush. I'm coming back to my bird and I'm going to add a little extra shading under that wing. You can see how pretty that color looks on the blue and on those tail feathers. You can add some up here under his neck and even on that back. If you don't want to, you don't have to. It's your piece. Do what you want. I, I personally like the way these colors look together, so that's why I added this. We're going to do a couple different things here. Um, 
to let things have a chance to dry in between. His beak is just painted on with spicy mustard. And you can use any kind of a round brush. And I basically, this is a, a actually a Joe Sonia Sure Touch number 1360 short liner. I'm really loving these Joe Sonia short liner brushes to do strokes. And I'm doing two small comma strokes here to make his beak. You can also use the same brush and put his eye in. And that's just going to be a circle with the spicy mustard. Once that's dry, I added a little bit of Again, a side load of summer squash. Blend that out. It's going to go on the top of the beak and on the tip. And then when that's dry, I picked up a little bit of that sugared peach again. Again, to bring all these colors together. Blending it out in my brush. I'm just using a dirty brush. And I'm adding a highlight to the top of that beak. To do the shading, again I picked up first a little bit of the spicy mustard in my brush because that's my base color. I'm going to blend that out and pick up the light cinnamon in the dirty brush. Blend right on top of that. And I'm going to shade my beak between the top and the bottom beak and also right next to his head. Put a couple comma strokes on the wing. This time I'm switching to the Josanya short liner number six, size six. Again, I'm real, the, these are my favorite brushes, go-to brushes anymore for doing strokes. I'm going to load my brush in the pink blush. Since my paint is tacking up a little bit, I'm just going to tip the tips of my bristles into some water. Come back to my puddle. That actually picked up a little too much, so I'm just going to blot it on my paper towel. I'm going to pull three comma strokes starting on the edge of the wing and then adding two more on top of there. When that dries, I'm going to have to, I don't have an extra set here for you, but um, let me show you what I did. You're picking up a tiny bit of the wild berry in my brush. I'm going to blend out again where I blended before. These aren't 100% dry, but you'll get the idea. I added a little bit of extra shading to the tops of each of those strokes just to give them a little bit more character. And then when that's dry, and here you can either use the number um, three short liner, which what I'm going to do now, I actually use the six on my sample piece. But just to show you how great these brushes work, I'm going to load this in my summer squash. And I'm going to add a yellow stroke on top of that pink. Again, I wanted all these colors brought through the entire design. I'm just thinking I forgot one step here for you. So let's go back to shading this bird. I'm going to pick up my flat shader again. I'm going to pick up um, my Williamsburg blue in the corner and blend it out. You see I keep blending always on a place where I blended before 
as I said, if the paint or the water is still there, I'm just reactivating that so I don't need to use as much moisture in my brush. When we did the um, highlight on the, the tail feathers, I did that on the top part of the feather. It would be easier for me to turn my piece around, but I don't want to do that here. So I just want to show you with the chisel edge, I'm going to come in right next to that highlight and add some shading between the tail feathers and on the bottom. And that's going to help to separate those tail feathers. Two last things on this bird. I'm going to use my zero liner brush. I like to use a script liner. I just find it works easier. We're going to put in his legs. And when you are doing lines, I'm sure you know you need extra water in your paint and brush. Again, my paint's a little tacky, so I'm just going to tip the tips of my bristles in some water. Come back here. There, that's a little bit better. And if you see, I'm loading my entire brush and pressing down as I'm doing this because you want to load all those bristles with the paint, not just the tip. And then you can pat it back into shape. And I'm just going to add a couple lines in here for his legs. To clean my brush and while that's drying I used some deco art light ivory I'm sorry light avocado and I picked up a little bit of the magenta and some light cinnamon again I want to keep all these colors in my piece I wanted something dark here Pick up a little more light cinnamon and a little bit more green in there. Again, I'm mixing these colors really well in my brush. I'm going to clean my brush because I don't want all that paint in there. Keeping that extra water. And you might want to adjust this color to, I probably could use a little bit more light cinnamon in here. I'm going to add a dot to the center of his eye and then I'm going to outline the eye. Yeah, you definitely probably want to make this a little bit, well, it's up to you. If I was doing this again, I'd probably add a little bit more green and a little bit more light cinnamon in there just to make it a little bit darker. I'm going to clean my brush again and go back into my summer squash and I just added like a hit and miss highlight on this bird's leg so I added a little here a little here just so it doesn't look like a brown stick there so you just add a little bit of a highlight the next thing we're going to do is work on the stem and the leaves all these comma strokes here 